welcome to Geeks vs. Nerds, the debate-style program where we investigate topics no one else has the guts, tenacity, or interest to investigate. The object of the show is simple. Secure the title for your team's candidate using facts, obscure knowledge, and trash talk. Tonight, Batman vs. Bond on Geeks vs. Nerds! who the Batman really was. It's not rocket surgery. He would be the rich guy that looked like a bag of scars sewn together with steely resolve. Somebody, I assume a geek, because only they would do something like this, has determined that Batman could actually exist. People at Wayne Enterprises have to know who they're developing their stuff for. You can't be a highly paid genius in your field and not wonder why all of your inventions have to be bat-shaped. <laughs> then one night while watching television with the family, you see Batman using one of your creations and claiming your shark repellent formula as his own. Bat bastard! That formula was my ticket into the big time. Bruce Wayne has all the toys, but he can't win because he'll never die. But does that make him the playboy with the better play toys? <laughs> Bond. James Bond. And then all the panties drop. This is why every teen boy loves 007. With a civil servant salary, he still gets laid all the time. It bears absolutely no resemblance to real life. James walks up to a girl at a bar, orders a martini, talks a little suggestively, and she throws herself at him. Sweet fucking deal. When I order a martini at a bar, all I get is drunk. When James gets a new car, it's top of the line, heavily modified and has big dick written in huge metaphorical letters. James Bond has a limitless expense account and a license to drink, but does that make him the better playboy with the better play toys? That's what we're here to find out. Let's meet the geeks and nerds. For James Bond, team nerd and your nerd herder, he is the purveyor of mind-numbing intoxicants and soul-shattering profanity. It's the geek-tastic Gavin Carruthers. He doesn't have the suave training or the ammunition that Bond does, but he does have a liver. It's the special agent in the hat, Larry Gent. She's the money and the worth of every penny. She's our Bond girl. It's Missy Brown. And for Batman, Team Geek and your geek leader, she is the many-headed terror that haunts you in the night after you wear socks and sandals. It's Ivy Jones. He is the graduate of the Gotham School of Performing Arts with three years in crime fighting, two years in jazz ballet. It's Ray Desjardins. <laughs> Hailing from Antigonish by way of Gotham City. He is the terror that flaps in the night. He is the wrong number that wakes you at 3 a.m. He is the batteries that are not included. It's Darkwing, no, no, wait a second. It's Andre Mayette. Hello, geeks and nerds. It is time for initiative, so if you would please pick up the die. Gavin got a five. The geeks, eight. So, geeks, would you care to go first or second? First. It is the opening round. Ready, begin. Geeks, please explain to me, you have two minutes, why Batman is the better playboy with the better play toys. Begin. 
So Batman has had the longest career overall. He started earliest. He got into this playboying and toying very early on in his publishing career, immediately, in 1939. This means that over the span of his career, he's had more opportunities to get toys, girls, and toys to use on these girls. He has the, the better... <laughs> He has the better backing team. He has Lucius Fox of Wayne Enterprises, and he has Alfred, his jack-of-all-trades poor guy who's in charge of stitching him up at the end of the evening. Okay, when it comes to toys, let's talk about options. Batman has tons of Batarangs alone. I mean, we're talking electrified, explosive, remote control, homing, heated, magnetic, sonic. Right now, he's working on one that hacks your Twitter account and writes things about you until you get an eating disorder. Okay, <laughs> but... <laughs> All this comes down to who is the most prepared, and that's Batman. Because Batman takes his toys, goes out every night, and kicks the crap out of people. That's what he does. Bond might get into a big brawl maybe once a month, twice if the girl says no. But other than... <laughs> other than that, he just goes around the world and covering sinister plots. Yeah. So does Tintin. And don't get me wrong, I like Tintin. I wouldn't want either one of them watching my back if I was in a fight with a group of junkies and a big fat hobo with a broken bottle who wanted to kill me, take my iPad, and go buy crack. Batman's greatest scene is his sexy, sexy buddy. He spent years training all over the world from England and Nanda Parbat. He knows 125 different combat styles. He's the Kama Sutra of the martial arts world. Except in his version of the 69, the only genitals that end up in your mouth are your own. Moving over to the nerds. Nerds, you have two minutes. Please explain to me why James Bond is the better playboy with the better play toys. Begin. James Bond is the ultimate spy and the ultimate badass because he has the best toys. These are the toys we all want. He's got the best car, that Austin Martin. He's got the watch. He's got the whole thing. But his best toy, absolutely fun. The one I'm truly envious of is his license to kill. I tried to get one. It's hard, man. Seriously. Like, if I had a license to kill, the line at Starbucks, way shorter. First person that has to ask about, like, do you have regular sizes? Pop. It's okay, I got a license to kill. First car that drives probably a Nickelback? Pop. It's okay, I got a license to fucking kill. But it's hard to get. And as much fun as the license to kill is, I have to say that I think the best toy is the Bond girl. The whole list of her. Pussy Galore, Honey Rider, Molly Goodhead. They're all lovely by me. Uh, that was Dr. Molly Hook Goodhead. She's a doctor. Letters after her name, how fine. <laughs> it also takes, on average, three sentences for Bond to seduce a woman, and one of those sentences happens to be his name. All right. <laughs> Gotta hand out the tokens. For Batman, we have a handmade Batarang. The next uh, thing is a do-it-yourself blow-up doll. <laughs> Ivana Sokolot, congratulations. It is round two. <laughs> Finish him. Please explain to me why James Bond is not the better playboy with the better play toys. You have two minutes. Begin. So, Bond is ultimately an errand boy. He always has someone he has to report to. M is the one who gives out his assignments, and Q is the one that he has to answer to when he re returns a smoldering wreck of a gift from this man developing his tools. Um, and most importantly, the queen, who is really a take-no-shit kind of lady. She is his biggest boss. Bond is working for the government. He has a paycheck and a pension, that's it. James Bond is a highly trained agent. I mean, he can use a pen, he can use a watch, <laughs> maybe a cigarette lighter, cigarette case, suitcase, but I mean, it's not very versatile. I mean, at least Batman has the option of using his gadgets to, I don't know, save people. Let's face it, if I was on a ship that was sinking, I want a guy with shark repellent and an oath to save as many people as he can. Not a guy with a tuxedo that inflates in its own air supply. Because he's not even going to try to save me. If anything, he's going to try to save that Eastern European chick that I was playing shuffleboard with on the deck before we sank. <laughs> That's all he's going to do. He's going to be lying on the beach drinking champagne with Natalia Genitalia or whatever stupid-ass Bond name she's got. I'm going to be in the ocean drowning like death by cock block is pretty much my fate. That's it. <laughs> All those gadgets, and he still can't cure the terrible, terrible STDs he's contracted from years of sex with questionable women. How's it going today, Money Penny? Not too bad, Mr. B. How's it going with you? 
Oh, not too good, money penny. It appears I have a collection of AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes, genital warts, and anal fissures. I, I believe together they're known as a Chad Kruger. <laughs> Bond uses water skis and zip lines, the same lame gadgets that middle-aged yuppies use on weekends to prove how adventurous they are and explain their wives' black eyes. There's a better than average chance that Batman is batshit crazy. The most basic definition of insanity is repeating the same actions over and over and over and over again and expecting a different result. Can I get a show of hands for how many times people have seen Batman capture Joker? Because there's been at least 70 in print, let alone on film. And every time he throws them in the exact same asylum and then patiently waits approximately seven weeks for that same crazy time on that same crazy channel when he gets to do it all again. It's not as sexy as saving the world, this whole trying to save your cesspool of a city over and over and over from the same half a dozen people. Gotham is a shithole, and Batman is an asshole. <laughs> Seriously. He's not even, a he, like, he claims to be a detective. He's not. He's got the Bat computer. What the hell do you need that for? All of his villains have ego signatures that can be seen from orbit. <laughs> like, you can solve it with, like, a fourth grade education and a phone book. Uh, who escaped this week? Uh, Enigma again. Well, let's see. P closed puzzle factory. Off we go. <laughs> Chum. James Bond gets all of his devices from Q. Batman doesn't build his own devices. Batman gets dozens of other people to build him for his as well. The toy maker, that guy he gets him to build all of his cars. And at best, Batman gets them and they're in several pieces. So he's that guy who buys Ikea furniture and it has to put it together himself. Damn it, Alfred! They forgot the Allen key! Where's the Allen key? Hold on, we have a uh, token being turned in. What point would you care to address? Bond has Q, all right, which is kind of cool, but we have Morgan Freeman. Just him explaining the gadgets is ten times cooler than anything Q does. Back to the nerds, please continue. You know, we look at a lot of the bad Batman movies, and the one thing they all have in common is bad soundtracks, and if I'm not mistaken, one of the soundtracks has Nickelback on it. Damning evidence indeed. Through intense physical training, strict attention to a specialized diet, and biofeedback treatments, he is the pinnacle of human physical prowess. Oh, don't forget healing ropes. Yes. Have you ever had a friend training for a marathon where all they talk about is what they eat and how far they ran and what song they're listening to now that really pumps them up? And don't forget about the ice baths because that helps with the muscle soreness afterwards. I hate that guy. I know, me too. Thank you very much. It is now the pig monkey question. Monkey. And the pig monkey question is, in order to be the playboy with the better play toys, the character has to have access to gadgets not available to the general public. Show how the candidate uses their super toys to make the rest of us jealous. Geeks, you have two minutes. Begin. How many of you have a car? Yes, cars. Good for the environment. Um, how many of you have cars that will pop out a little robotic suit if you crawl under the car and are under attack? You're lying, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I would like, I know this is New 52 and I know it's kind of meh, but like, okay. Bat Mecca. He rolls under his car and it just attaches to him. It's like the Tony Stark version of the bat suit. And it's nuke proof. Here is Batman climbing up and disarming a nuke in said suit. Jealous? I am. Token being turned in. I'd like to um, contest the pull your hero by a tow rope from your car point. That's more like the Tony Stark how I got home after I drunk last night. And Indiana Jones did it in a fridge. <laughs> if Indy can survive a nuclear blast in a fridge, bat armor really doesn't count for much. All right. Good. Back over to the geeks. So when you're talking about obscure gadgets, something that we don't have, something that's really good, in an emergency, Batman has a kryptonite ring. Think about that. It's like, oh, James, you just beat up a Romanian with a bad haircut, a cheap suit, and a fake accent? I just pimp slapped Superman. <laughs> <laughs> and when he woke up, I said, hey, Clark, guess what? Just bought the Daily Planet. Why don't you just run your little Kryptonian ass over there and go make daddy some money? <laughs> Aside from all the excellent batarangs, fantastic vehicles, and astounding gadgets, he invented a satellite. 
a fucking satellite. And not just any satellite. No, a satellite that monitors and eventually created superheroes. It's called the OMAX satellite. He created it so he could watch and take down super people at the press of a button. Jealous? What would you call an emotion towards someone who could kill Lady Gaga, the Kardashians, Nickelback, Stephen Harper, LMFAO, Honey Boo Boo, all Big Brother castmates, Britney Spears, Avril Lavigne, Joel Schumacher, Michael Bay, post-episode 6, George Lucas, and the entire cast of Two and a Half Men with the press of a button? I call that fucking jealousy. Moving over to the nerds. Show how the candidate uses their super toys to make the rest of us jealous. You have two minutes. Begin. Nothing makes me more jealous of a toy than when I am not allowed to play with it. Remember when you were a kid and the kid down the street had the awesome Millennium Falcon and he thought that you couldn't pilot because you were a girl? I digress. Yes, now. I do. In for your eyes only. The ship goes down and when the ship goes down, so does ATT&CK. ATT&CK stands for the Automatic Targeting Attack Computer, which controls all, as in every single one of the British nuclear subs. And you know what that means, folks? Wizard's battleship. So much fun could be had with this, that Bond decided the only thing he could possibly do was destroy it. So that not only would we not be able to play with it, we would never even be able to think about Wizard's battleship again. Every geek here loves their phone. They love their smartphone. They always want the best phone, the newest app, the newest ability to do things with their phone. Look at me, I just twitted that I'm shitting on a toilet. Hey, you followed me. Why, well, I... I... <laughs> But Bond had a phone that could drive a car. And this, he had an app for that. And this was before phones had apps for that. There are many things, as a kid, I loved that James Bond had. That jetpack was so cool. But an Austin Spider, really? I mean, that is the ultimate car. I'm jealous of that. That is so cool. I think the invisible car was kind of cool myself. It makes cruising insanely new. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice, moving on to the best round here. <laughs> Please explain to me how Batman would beat up 007 in a fight. Begin. Let's say somehow magically, James Bond figures out where the Batcave is, and he goes down there to sneak. Bruce anticipates this coming. He gets Selina to come over and dress provocatively, because it seems that the thing that can disarm a man, especially Bond, quickly is a big set of titties. So, she is down there. She welcomes Bond. Hello, James. Welcome to the Batcave. We've been expecting you. Rufy's the motherfucker. He likes to drink. Ties him up, leaves him for Bruce to find, and Bruce can just kick the shit out of him in the Bat Mecca, just for fun. Because James Bond doesn't have one of those. <laughs> so, the Batmobile just completely runs over the Aston Martin. And everyone knows that James Bond's going to escape because he's got the... Ex ejection seat and everything like that, pulls out his trusty Walter PPK and just watches as all the bullets fall off Batman's armor. And then, after being riddled with batarangs and beaten to a physical pulp, whatever's left of him is just poured into a martini glass and ironically served, shaken not stirred, to the warden of Arkham Asylum, where he can live his life as the Joker's bitch. Bonds, Aston Martins, run off the road by the Batwing. Crawling out of the wreckage, Bond pulls out his PPK, only to have it knocked out of his hand by a batarang. Then he grabs for his laser pen, only to have that taken away by a grappling hook. He tries his trusty laser watch, but it too is damaged by a bat-shaped throwing star. Bond begs for his life, begs for mercy, as without his toys, he's just a brainless thug. Batman narrows his eyes and says, I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you. As the billion-dollar OMAX satellite shoots a laser beam, incinerating James Bond. But don't worry. The Chad Kruger super virus lives on. Thank you very much, geeks. Moving over to the nerds. So MI6 sends Bond to Gotham. For some reason. We'll worry about that later. Bond, Batman, obviously going after the same people, obviously are not going to get along too well. Now, the Catwoman scenario, while cute, Sean Connery is James Bond. Sean Connery knows how to smack a woman around. So that's not even an issue. James Bond actually knows quite a lot about Batman, because he's got MI6's research division, and it's not hard to figure out who Batman is. But we'll leave that alone. We'll even let him have his armor. His, James Bond is a sniper and a master marksman, and Batman's face is largely unprotected. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Batman goes to Gotham, and he somehow magically finds the Batcave. Google search. 
He gets in there, and of course, Batman decides to send Catwoman after him because apparently the only thing that could be Batman is a big set of titties. But this is Sean Connery. He looks at Catwoman and goes, hmm, I think I need to pet this pushy. Next thing you know, Catwoman's fighting on Bond's side. Our boy Batman over there has this pesky little moral code whereby he refuses to kill anyone with his own hands because that would lower him to the level of the criminals that he fights. Holier than thou much. So technically, if we're going to duke this out the way that we all think that we're going to, it's going to be a fight to the death, much like this debate. And when it comes down to a fight to the death, Batman has already taken himself out of the running because of his morally superior high ground. Ooh, good point from the geeks. Batman good point will from the nerds. Kill. James Bond is all about the killing. And the huh? Bond girls. And the Bond girls. And the Bond girls. Very nice. It is the scrap. It's five minutes of open debate. <laughs> Bruce Wayne is a, okay, billionaire. He's got his own private army of fighters. He's got high-tech satellites. He's got his own personal agenda. He's a goddamn Bond villain. Batman has to create thousands of gadgets because he lives in Gotham City. A place where the mundanest act creates terrifying supervillains. Being late for a meeting created the Clock King. Getting a ventriloquist dummy for a kid created the ventriloquist. Uh, his wife getting cancer made Mr. Freeze. Look, I accidentally nicked my crotch on the way in here. Tomorrow I start my career as Dick Man the Destroyer. Look, here's the thing that really matters, okay? When Bruce Wayne gets too old to be Batman, he's just going to go off and live the life of a billionaire. When James Bond gets too old to be a spy, he's just going to be that creepy old British guy with a good pension who relives his glory days by reenacting everything with his eight cats. Hey, Batman killed Darkseid, the baddest man in the entire universe. That's an incredible feat. I mean, I have trouble with mundane murders like spiders and the homeless. <laughs> there was this little incident in A View to a Kill where the skis get broken. So Bond, being the ingenious, creative fella that he is, snaps off the front sled of the broken snowmobile, straps it to his feet, and invents snowboarding. It's the first incident of snowboarding. The first guys down in Vale and Aspen that tried it out actually said, well, we saw James Bond do it, and we thought we'd give it a try. There was also an incident where James Bond was captured for, what, four years by the Chinese and beaten like a redheaded stepchild? <laughs> you want to talk Batman. about redheaded stepchildren? What happened to Batman's redheaded stepdaughter? Oh, yeah, shot in the back by the Joker. And came back to life. Oracle! Oh, look, he created shark repellent, and it worked, damn it. That's something not even leading marine biologists could do. I Are you nuts? Shoemaker's I a shark, and he couldn't keep him away. Done. No luchador has ever I broken Bond's back. I tried to create back. a bear repellent, but I'm still pursued by hairy gay men. <laughs> All right, so the best thing about Bond is Sean Connery. And everyone does a bad Sean Connery accent. I mean, you do one, I do one. The best part is even Bane does a bad Sean Connery accent. <laughs> Before he breaks the bat. Well, Batman, this is my city now. Well, look, look. Bond relies entirely on guns. Thank you! Final words. Nerds. Nerds. James Bond can seduce any woman on earth with three simple words. Bond. James, James Bond. Bond. Final words, geeks. I'm Batman. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's time for you to make your decision. Do we hear it? for Bond and the nerds. Or do we hear it for Batman and the geeks? I hereby declare that the better playboy with the better play toys is Batman. Thank you for watching Geeks vs. Nerds. Hey.